So are you involved in politics yet at all, or was your brother at the that one time? that brought, yeah, in the late 50s? I ran for office in 63. Um, Did Zeke get you involved in politics, or yeah. were you involved before Zeke? No, no, Zeke. There was a guy running for council named Bill Sweeney. Bill Sweeney was our councilman. Yeah. And the and the ward, the wards were changing, and Cleveland was changing from from white to black on the east side. And Bill was the Bill was the councilman. And, he, he, and I remember him telling us that he didn't really understand, uh, you know, the, the demands and the concerns from the constituents was different. Black people wanted jobs, and white councilmen would, would, would fix streets and those types of things. And we belonged to the war club. You and Zeke? Yeah, we belonged to the war club. And he had suggested that he wasn't going to run again. And that's when I said, well, this is something I wanted to do. When I was in college, I wanted to be in politics. In Memphis, you couldn't be in politics, okay? And uh, I put my hat in, and a lady named Ann Brown, who later became the director of senior services at Asian. City Hall. Yeah, yeah, correct. Nice lady. Yes. And I ran against her. There was about seven, eight of us in, the, in that race. It was about uh, Jerry Gold. Jerry Gold was the, was the only white guy. And Ann Brown was a, was a, was a favorite. The I, lawyer Jerry Gold? Yeah. No, Jerry Goldman. Jerry Gold. Goldman. Okay. Was, uh, Ann Brown and a guy named Al Brown and I, Ike Thompson. Okay. Ike was ward leader. And we, I won the primary. And in the general, I decided, well, how are we going to do this? Well, I was married, I had a kid, and I'd walk the streets. I walked the ward three times. I walked the street, Helen was in a buggy and a stroller. So we said, I want to say, how are we going to do this? And we knew that black folks were basically Democrats. And Ann Brown was a great candidate. Mm -hmm. So we put out, on election day, we put out, a, we put out a poster, a ballot. Your choice on election day. George Ford, Democrat, and Brown, Republican. It was over. It was over. George Ford, because Ann never publicized that she's a Republican. You had basically have all black war, all Democrats. You have a choice, your choice. And George Ford, Democrat, and Brown, Republican. We won it overwhelmingly. That was 63. 63, yeah. And then that's when we had uh, a change in, in the politics of city council. Jim Stanton ran against Jack Russell. And we overthrew Jack. That was a great coup. You were one of the swing key votes yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah we was in hotel rooms hiding until they called the roll and those type of things. But it kind of changed the politics of Cleveland at that particular time. Ralph Loker got reelected, but it was a, a young, different council. This is 60, so you're elected in the fall of 63. When did you first meet Carl, Carl Stokes? I met Carl when I was in, in law school. Carl was, uh, was assistant prosecutor city prosecutor, and I, I wanted to get into politics, went out and talked to him, and I never forget, he said, look, you know, <laughs> he said, go, said, go out there and latch on to one of them young white boys, and uh, who's busy, who's not going to stay in politics, and stick with him, and that's when I hooked up with Bill Sweeney, and Bill, true enough, when it changed, he said, look, I, I can't stay here, this isn't what I was, uh, wanted to do, and he supported me with uh, with the white section of the 20, old 27th War. So how involved were you in the 1965, in Carl's 1965 campaign for mayor? Campaign? Yes. Yeah, then he won in 67. Yes. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you, let me tell you an interesting story. I think it was about, I think it was about s seven or eight of us, black councilmen at that time. And I only think, I think only Jimmy Bell, only Jimmy Bell supported Carl uh, openly. We met with Carl. 
Carl came and he met with us. And he, he had been in the legislature. He came and met with us. And he said that I don't have to ask. For, I don't. He would not ask us to support him. It was more or less put in a demand that I'm going to win. And you can come if you want, but I'm not. I don't have to ask you. And because of the fact that he did not ask us, this, this is basically the black councilman. We didn't support it. Now, and he lost. And it's, it's, it's something that I've regretted ever since, but it was a matter of egos. Uh, we elected, we got elected. At least you ask us. He said, no, I'm black. You're gonna support me. Jimmy Bell, and Jimmy Bell had committed that he wasn't gonna do it either, but Jimmy felt- Is Charlie on council yet? Absolutely. Charlie Carr, Jimmy Bell, Clarence Gaines, George White. Leo. Leo. All right. Uh, I, I always looked black and regretted it, but now the next time he ran in 67, I remember him coming across my yard. Uh, big, long Lincoln. <laughs> I said, what you with me? I said, I'm with you, my man. Okay, and we all, we all um, supported him. And in, in those days, you had all these, you had people like Gene Capers, Geraldine Williams, right. people who were the forerunners of, in, of the civil rights movement in this town who were, who had this, they were with Carl and then they, they were almost to a person they have fell out with him at some point. Yeah, well, Gene, uh, Geraldine Williams were, and, and they were supporters, and, and Gene, May, Gene Capers had been in council. And they were, they were not so much political, I mean, uh, civil rights forerunners as black political activists, okay. And was Leo ever with Carol, Leo Jackson? Leo was always a man who marched to a different drama. Leo was not concerned about the politics of the city as he was concerned about the advancement of the city as it treated people. Good government. He was, he was really a good government man. And I was very close with both Leo and Charlie, and Charlie was more politically in tune. Leo was, he wanted good government. That's, that's what he uh, hankered for. But he, 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 he it was Charlie, Jimmy Bell, Warren Gillum. These guys were, were part of the Miller machine operation. Ray Miller was chairman of the party, and, and Charlie didn't really do anything. But Charlie was 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 was, was a was a was a politician. He understood the politics of things. He, you, we got things through politics. You delivered the vote, and, you did, and we 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 got these things. Leo was good government. I want I want good government. Well, we're talking about Charlie. He was one of your idols. He was your your mentor. Your mentor. He's my mentor, and that's uh, why I you stuck with him through some bad, some tougher times Absolutely. later later in his his career. Absolutely. We used to go to we, we all used to go down to D.C. together to uh, to the White House with Lyndon Johnson. I never forget one time uh, we went down to um, some kind of Democratic thing in the White House. Johnson was the president. And Johnson knew Charlie. Uh, Johnson, we went to, hey, Charlie, you know. And we went to, the, we was on a limousine, and we were going to the White House. And I sat next to Charlie, two seats. And I looked down, and there was a pistol on the, on the seat. True story. <laughs> and Charlie's, Charlie's pistol fell out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and he he put, picked up his pistol and put it back in his pocket and went on into the White House. <laughs> and he took it in. Hey, Mr. President, hey, Charlie, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> no. I said, well, this is the side of politics I should be in. <laughs> True story. Yeah. But he he knew he knew he knew everybody. Everybody knew him. And his friends in Detroit, all over the country. He told me a story once that during the war, uh, Adam Clayton Powell, there's only there was two blacks in Congress, Omen Dawson out of Illinois and Adam Clayton Powell out of uh, uh, New York. And 
I guess the President Roosevelt had, had sent Powell on a, a tour to sell bonds, and and they came to Cleveland. He was going to Toledo, and they were had got some gas. He was driving to Toledo, and somewhere along that on that on the highway, they were hungry. But you couldn't blacks couldn't couldn't stop on the road and and eat. So he says that Adam said stop. So they stopped at a place and. Adam was a very light-skinned guy. He went in and sat down in the window and started eating. And Charlie and the other guy sat out there in the car and watched him. So when he got through eating, he came back and wiped his mouth and said, let's go to Toledo. <laughs> so he said, they took him to Toledo, and they left him in Toledo. <laughs> so Carl's mayoralty, did that change the city? I mean, it, it changed the politics contributed to changing the politics in Cleveland. Um, yeah. yeah, it was, it was, it, it was a time of, of, well, it was, really was the, the black renaissance. You know, it was great enthusiasm. Uh, things were happening in the South. Uh, Martin Luther King was marching in Atlanta. And we were we were in the forefront of this, and that we were going to uh, had a black guy that's running from from there. And they weren't doing that in the South. And Dr. King used to come here all the time. Uh, it has been played down, but I I have pictures of we were on a flatbed truck. And the Operation Breadbasket Band would be playing music. <clears throat> They'd play it. And they would <clears throat> go to shopping centers, pick and pays for their stores. The band would start playing, and Dr. King would come up and he'd start talking. Went all over the city. It was tremendously important to the registration drive that took place in Cleveland. Uh, and without that, we wouldn't have been able to get all those people registered. <clears throat> so it was, and then, you know, just everybody was enthused about it. We can get a black mayor. I remember. Dick Hatcher used to come to, to Cleveland. He came to my house one day, he sat in the backyard. And he was, he was trying to do the same thing in Gary that we were doing here. And there's always been a <clears throat> concern about who was the first elected mayor, whether it was Stokes or, or Hatcher. But it, it was great enthusiasm. Did you know Dr. King well? Only from him, him coming here. And... Uh, he had a contingent, <coughs> excuse me, of young black preachers, uh, Reverend Owens and Randolph, and they had they had they were stationed here to help make these things work. And uh, he'd come down to uh, Olivet Institution Baptist Church where Dr. Hoover was the pastor, and they were great friends. And I, I met him through his trips to uh, coming through Cleveland. And when I became president of council, I, I did a fundraiser for him. It's after he had been killed. I did a fundraiser for Mrs. King here in Cleveland. And I think we raised about $100,000. And I, Carol and I took the money down for, her to, for his operation down there. Yeah. 